I uh, got introduced to the game through my family. Yeah. And this couple, they had a PlayStation, well, the guy did anyway, <laughs> and uh, they had Gran Turismo 1 and the shooting game. So I put Gran Turismo on. So every day after that day, I would pretty much go over their house. Go over to the neighbor's house, yeah, yeah. And play. My parents incentivized me with cash to get results in school. Okay. So I was doing two courses, design technology and PE, obviously, because yeah. that's what everyone does. Yeah, yeah. does. And uh, I, had, I had okay results and I had got given £300 for my results. That many of them I used to buy the wheel and the pedals I used to qualify for the academy. So I'd only had the wheel and pedals maybe eight months or so. Wow. Um, and that frame, that um, simulator rig is in the movie. But it was only for fun. I did that. For f I thought I was okay at the game. You I didn't know how good you were? Not really. Like while you're here, are you going to go to the Dubai Autodrome and race some cars or, or drive some? Yeah, I think we're doing that tomorrow. We have some uh, some friends time? here. I'm just going to book the. Uh, we're doing it and I think nine. Hey, Do not bring my Ford Explorer, bro. Let's see yeah, what you can yeah. really do, bro. Car to car. <laughs> we're seven seated with two car seats in the back. Let's see what you can do, bro. <laughs> But I mean, if there's any embarrassing moments, this would be the time before we start recording. Mm. No? No, nothing comes to mind. You clocked on already, right? Is my flying. <laughs> no, 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 no. We started recording ages ago. <laughs> Jan Mardenborough in the house. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thanks, man. It's an absolute honor to have you here. Um, back in Dubai again. Welcome back. Not the first time you've been here, right? No, it's, I've been here maybe like five times, I think in total three times in the last maybe nine months and then the rest is for racing way back about nine years ago in the autodrome in the autodrome what do you think of that track it's uh i like it actually it's a good circuit i've been there a few times for 24-hour races and it's dark mm. i mean a lot i say that as if it's it, that's normal when it get the sun goes down it gets dark but mm. normally at racetracks we have lights Floodlit lights, whereas that one doesn't have many lights. Really? Oh uh, yeah, it's, it gets really dark there, and the nights in Dubai are long as well. Mm. So um, I enjoy that track. It's a good circuit. It's a good one. You're just coming back from uh, Japan now. Yes. What's happening in Japan? I do a few events. Also, okay. the timing of the release in Japan of the movie um, was on the 15th of September. So I was there a few days after the release. So the timing of it was good. I was going there anyway for an event, which was different to the movie. I just happened to be there at the right time of the release of the movie. And a few events, talking to teams, um, getting to people's faces, meeting sponsors, because I'm preparing for next year's racing season. Uh, we're, well, it's the 4th of October. Mm. And uh, now is the time to get things in place, packages for, for next season of racing, which starts normally march april but uh it needs to be now so of course with the movie release being still in the ether it the timing of it is is good so yeah, yeah busy i was there for two weeks and it flew by yeah it's just quick. every day i had so many friends i needed to meet i wanted to meet as well mm. that would hit me up but it's just business all the time every yeah, day, you can't, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh plants and seeds and we all reap the the rewards, the rewards after, yeah. Later, well, it's good yeah. that you came here. So look, before your first race as well, I can give you a bit of advice on, on, on a couple of turns and a couple of ways to do things. I mean, I got from my house to here in 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Thanks, yeah. man. I do only live four minutes away, so I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> when we got to talk about the movie for sure. I mean, crazy underdog story. I love those movies. It's like you and Rocky Barba are the two people that I wanted on my on my podcast, and I've got one of them. Dude, I cried during the movie. Do I what? I, I said I cried during the movie. Oh, man. Like, I'm not even joking. I mean, to be honest, I cried during X Factor, but still, like, I just love that mm. underdog. There's something that just warms your heart when you see something that's not supposed to happen, happen. Mm. Before we talk about the movie, I want to go back to the game of how you first initially got into it. What was your first ever memory of that game in, in particular? And I think we should talk about the game as well, because I don't think people understand the attention to detail that's in that game that was revolutionary for the time, right? Mm. 
So I uh, got introduced to the game through my family. They had a friends across the street from where I lived and it was bonfire night and I was eight years old. And instead of socializing with the parents, I didn't like loud noises for one. So fireworks for me were out. Yeah. And this couple, they had a PlayStation where well, the guy did anyway. <laughs> and uh, they had Gran Turismo 1 and the shooting game. So I put Gran Turismo on. I remember the first car I bought on there as well. It was a pink Mitsubishi 3000 GT for the people that are into cars. That's my brother right there. He's, he's nodding his head already. And the, the circuit was Autumn Ring. And it's strange how I remember it so vividly because it's such a, a random thing to remember. But that was the first time I was introduced to the game. So that was bonfire night. And then every school tour has started. So every day after that day, I would pretty much go over their house. Go over to the neighbor's house, yeah, yeah. And play. And the wife got so, f I don't think he was fed up, that's wrong of me to say, but they could see that I enjoyed the game. And she turned up one day at my parents' house and just had the PlayStation and Gran Turismo 1 in hand and wow. gave me, gave, well, my mother the PlayStation, which she gave to me to play. That's where the gaming started. And then, of course, I kick, it kicked off a whole, I had all the PlayStations, all the Gran Turismo's mm. and racing games. Um, but you talk about Gran Turismo and why it's so special is I was eight and I, I knew that that was important, that it, I vibed with that game because of the attention to detail. I wasn't, I didn't know how to drive a car, but comparing that game to say something on Sega or yeah, other yeah. platforms where there's smoke coming off the tires yeah. every time you turn the steering wheel, I knew that wasn't realistic because yeah. I'd watched it on TV, motorsport. And uh, you could see how the car kind of rolls and it, it, the car platform kind of reacted the same way as it looked on, on TV. So I, it was important to me what I was playing. The car that I'm using on that game is accurately modeled because I'd love to drive that car in real life. Mm. That's always been the theme. And every time there's a new game, new GT, new GT3, 2, 5, whatever, the physics get better. And it's so, I would love to race a McLaren F1. Mm. They're 20 million quid. So, but it's important to me that if I'm playing Gran Turismo or any game and the McLaren F1's on there, it feels like the, McLaren, yeah. like the real version. Yeah. Hopefully I get to play drive one in real life in the future. You're in if, Dubai, if my friend. Know, Don't worry, right I will place. make some calls. By the time we finish this episode, there'll be one downstairs waiting <laughs> for you. I'm in the right place yeah. for that. But it was, it was, that was important to me. The cars have always been the stars in yeah. my eyes. So playing something which is accurately modeled um, was the number one th thing for me that was attractive to that, to that game. Mm. Uh, I never thought that I could use that platform to get into racing. That wasn't really the thinking. It was, I love playing this. I enjoy playing this and I'd love to be a racing driver, but it was, that was it. There was no kind of, how do I get to there? Mm. It was just, I just like playing this. And how quick did you start to become nerdy about it when oh, it comes to getting always. the steering? Because obviously in the beginning you played with a joypad, right? I played the Your neighbor didn't for, have the, the steering wheel. I only had the steering wheel for probably eight months and yeah. before I got into the academy. Wow, I, really? That yeah. you, So you were playing it for that long on the yeah. thing? Do you think that helped? Or do you think that- No, uh, it was just, they were expensive. Yeah. Because this is what people don't understand when like I, a couple of people, they talk about gaming and stuff. And I'm like, if your kid's a gamer and he's a proper gamer, that's not cheap. No. Because steering wheels and pedals and all that stuff, like you can obviously get the the crappy versions that you yeah. buy for cheap. But once they start to be like, no, 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 I don't want that one. I need to order this one because it's got this light on the corner that does that. And it's got this these track pads and all that stuff. Like it gets starts to get crazy. Absolutely. So... Um, Not as much as racing a car. I mean, I'm sure that they were I'm happy that it was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still, you know, my setup now, it's, I, of course, I work so I can put money into that. Mm. But my setup is around 7,000, 8,000 pounds. But that will last me 10 years. Yeah. The frame will last probably a lifetime because it's aluminium. Do you have a proper like? No, it's just extruded aluminium and it's stiff. And the, the motor and the pedals are good enough. And the screen's decent screen. Yeah. It's the, the expensive part is the PC. Yeah. I'm not technically minded. I just buy something on Amazon and yeah, like, yeah, you know, like run that. that game, that platform, that sim, great. But back in the day, um, I didn't, it wasn't PC, I was playing PlayStation. PlayStation yeah. I didn't have a PC. Um, but I was playing on the joypads and I only got my simulator rig because I made it. I was 18 and I was doing design technology in school. Yeah. And for the second year, I, I was in the mindset of, I am making a rig. I, I want one. 
Yeah. So I'm going to make my own. So I, you, I made By half any means of it necessary, home. like, yeah. Made half of it at home. And when the school term started, I had to kind of fit it to a design brief. There was eight design briefs my design technology course had give, provided us. So one of them was design something in an Art Deco style. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to paint it in an Art Deco yeah. style. But I made that frame out of wood and MDF and pine, pine wood. And with the money, my parents incentivized me with cash to get results in school. Okay. So I was doing two courses, design technology and PE, obviously, because yeah. so everyone does PE. Yeah, yeah. He does. And uh, I, I had okay results and I had got given £300 for my results. That many of them I used to buy the wheel and the pedals I used to qualify for the academy. So I'd only had the wheel and pedals maybe eight months or so. Wow. Um, and that frame, that um, simulator rig is in the movie. Oh, the one that you use, right? Yeah, so it's what, because people now, they go on my social media and I've had Instagram for, since 2012, I think. Mm -hmm. And there's a picture from 2012 <laughs> and um, it has my rig in it. So the colors, it's black and everything from like August 2012. But that's when I used to qualify. And that one is in the movie. So if you look at in, it's in, in there for a split second. In the first part of the movie, there's a scene where it's in my bedroom. And I asked the director, could you please model my rig? So they made a replica. Okay. It's in there. Wow. So it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it's come, kind of come full circle because the thing that I used to qualify to get to where I am is also in the movie that I use. That's crazy. Like, so it's, it's, I feel how, happy about that. How different did it change the driving experience from when you went from a joypad to the steering wheel? It was just Obviously, fun. it's it like, was literally yeah. for fun. I wanted, because I got bored of playing with the pad. But it didn't make you any better? Oh, of course, I think it made yeah. me better, but like. But I, that wasn't initially the. No, yeah, it yeah. Was, it's more fun because I just played online. Mm. That's all I did. And I, before online on PlayStation 2, I just played it with my mates across the street, split screen. Uh, that was my reference. So for GT Academy, um, that was the first time trial I ever did. It's first competition time trial because I don't like time trials because they're boring. Mm. Driving by yourself on one circuit in one car with no rivals, it's yeah, like, yeah. I don't care. I yeah, there's nothing fun. to push you either. I'd rather yeah. go online yeah. and play against real people in a slower car and have satisfaction of beating somebody in a slower car. Mm. That's fun for me. Yeah, I just felt like I was good at the game. Because like, I'm too good now, so what I'm going to do to make it difficult for me is I'm going to get. I think it was too good. I'm going to be in a Fiat 500 while you're in a race car, <laughs> yeah. and I'm just going to beat you around the thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I, beat, if I beat somebody in a Fiat 500 when they're <laughs> in something powerful, yeah, that's a real that's a real satisfaction. Yeah, but, exactly. But it was only for fun. I did that. For, I thought I was okay at the game. You didn't, didn't know how good you were. Not really. Yeah, where's your reference point, right? Exactly. If you're not really playing so, against people, yeah. which is why I thought. When I entered the academy, the online path, it was like, okay, now I have, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how I rank because mm. now everybody's in the same car. It was a, a Nissan 370Z on a, on a Mickey Mouse made up circuit. And the competition was open for six weeks and the top 20 to go th through to the next stage. So I thought, okay, great. I'll see how far I can, how, where I rank. Mm. First day, I think I tried for maybe a few hours and I was 50th in the UK. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll wait a few weeks because obviously in the early days of the competition, the times get quicker and quicker. Yeah, yeah. So I waited until the last two weeks because then at that point you kind of feel where the limit is in terms of lap time. So I was on it for maybe eight hours a day, every day for two weeks, qualified ninth and then got invited to the academy. And then, yeah. All right. Let's go back to that part. The, <clears throat> because it's obviously quite difficult to see how true to life the movie is, right? Mm. When, how did you feel? And just explain that to me when, when you realized that the invite was real, when obviously you see it. So did the, you expect it to be a real thing or were you kind of like, eh. the The movie shows like I was invited, but it, it misses out the qualification. Mm. But even hearing about the competition itself, knowing yeah. that this is an opportunity where you kind of like, hold on a minute, what's, like, like, did I manifest this or is this too good on, to be true? I was very lucky, my timing, because yeah. I, let's go back to 2011. So I found the competition purely by being in the right place at the right time, January or February, 2011. I just dropped out of university in September, late September, 2010. I was doing motorsport engineering 
And the only reason why I went on that course was because they sh on the induction day, they showed us around the car garages. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why in my mind, I'm, I'm, I said to myself, I'm going to be able to drive these rally cars in the Formula Student car. I don't know why I thought that, but that's mm -hmm. the only reason why I went on the course. I quickly realized that wasn't the case. You feel like you case. lied to me, <laughs> you sneaky. It's a lot of maths. Yeah, yeah. Living on a massive hill in Swansea and it was just terrible environment. I didn't like it. So I dropped out. I knew it wasn't right for me. Parents were like, are you sure you should stay? And I was like, no, I'm not doing mm -hmm. this. It's not me. Dropped out. And of course, my social status within the world at that point is on the floor because I'm... Um, I mean, I didn't have a job for a while. Then I was working in Next, which movie shows, mm. which hanging clothes on the clothes. Dude, I get it. My work experience was in Dorothy Perkins. I don't even know if you know what that is. Yeah, so underwear Dor shop. <laughs> you know the feel of working. <laughs> yeah, 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 like yeah. You're treated as yeah, yeah, yeah. Like nothing. You don't yeah. exist. Um, so in, within the family as well, it's like, okay, you're living at home. You're 19. You know, it's not a good situation. And uh, yeah, I come downstairs and I say to my dad, I've entered this competition where I found it a few months later. Um, I've in this competition and there's a chance I could become a racing driver and he's watching Sky Sports News my brother kind of look at me and go yeah right oh yeah. <laughs> that was that yeah. um, but that when I found the competition I, I knew of the competition previously from an advert mm. um, and I was like okay let's see how far I can go it felt like I knew it was real because I've heard of it before, but it was like, okay, let's dedicate everything into it. Yeah, because it wasn't the first one, right? There was one a year before, two yeah. years before. I think every two years they were doing it. They did it start in 2008, 2010, and my, in 2011, my year. They missed 2009 mm. because of the <clears throat> financial crisis. Mm. And then it ran every year till 2015, maybe. And you were the youngest ever winner of this. Yes. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. Another thing that I was saying, I was speaking to my brother because in the movie they make it seem like you won the competition, you went a couple of weeks, you know, a, a week later you're in the cars. I'm sure that they obviously condensed that time to make mm. it space in the movie because they're not going to show how long you were actually training on the thing, right? So, how long was the time where before, well, from when you won to, okay, we're going to actually put you guys into the cars now and let you start driving on the track? Two weeks. Because I won really? the competition was that quick? in June, June 2011 and uh, started racing in July 2011. Yeah. So once I'm on the podium, champagne and everything, I knew at that moment my life's going to change. Yeah, yeah. And I had around two weeks, I think, wow. at home. Because then I lived in I lived in Cardiff originally, my family. And then I moved to Northampton. Uh, so, I mean, it's 20 minutes to Silverstone. I was at Silverstone a minimum of four times a week in cars with my mentors. And, um, yeah. And then the racing season is condensed. Uh, so racing year actually is you don't race from it's not open all year so it's not like you race in January to December yeah, yeah. you have moments where it's open because it gets too cold or the, yeah, the rain yeah. exactly so uh, we're in July the racing season really starts to finish around November at the latest so in those short period of time I have to get my international racing license also to be competent as a racing yeah, driver yeah, yeah. to get ready for the Dubai 24 hour race in January 2012 so yeah, there's a lot of racing that goes on in that time, getting faster, learning, developing. Um, there's a TV crew following following me as well. Cause yeah, because I heard that they were doing like a a reality show, right? Yeah. Style thing over it. Well, they filmed all the behind the scenes of what goes on. Mm. Um, I forget where they went out. I went on the E4, I think, in the UK. Yeah, E4, and there's a, there was a racing channel that uh, mm. I think it went out on. I never watched it. I never watched anything. You know, watching it yeah, of yourself is weird, right? It's it just, is yeah, very yeah, strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was very full on, really full on, uh, very good memories of that time. A lot of good people around me made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I still remember my first, first racing experience. So, you know, I've, for the vast majority of my career, I've had very good interaction with people. Mm. Uh, but my first ever race experience after winning the Academy was at Pembury. It was a uh, grassroots level competition yeah, yeah. called Welsh Sports Car and Saloon Car Championships, something like that. I was talking to somebody in the paddock <clears throat> and this guy comes over and he interjected our conversation and said, hello, I'm so-and-so. I'm the previous champion of Welsh Sports Car and Saloon Car Champion, mm. blah, blah, blah. 
that's a shaky hand. I was like, that's weird to introduce yeah, yeah, to come to and yourself say that. as a champion. But okay, yeah. whatever. Maybe this is what they do in the most world because this it's is my like first a weird weekend. ego thing, right? Very. It's like somebody talking to a girl and someone else going, "Hi, nice to meet you. I'm richer than him." Exactly. Like, do you know what I mean? Yes. Who asked you? <laughs> like, no one asked you to come in here. Yeah. So, and then he went on to say, uh, "Look, if you see me in your mirrors, don't fight me. Just let me go." And I'm a competitive guy, and you know I'm wanting to prove the world to yeah. prove myself to the world and this guy just comes over and says this i'm like okay cool nice thanks you've just yeah. put some gas fuel the fire on, yeah, yeah. on me fantastic but uh i tell this story quite a lot because when i when the movie people ask me of what interactions have you had that have been where people have kind of judged you in in a way perceived you in a certain way and to my face it's only happened a few times but that was one of them that was the first one mm. And um, yeah, it's so it needless to say he was in my mirrors the whole weekend. The whole weekend, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, trying to get by. But that just shows how much of a threat that he actually thought you were. That it's wild. he knew that already you were going to be in front of him. <laughs> the ego is a, is a you know weird I mean? thing, like yeah. in sports, like, people are very fragile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very fragile people, and um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, sport is a funny game. It's a very weird one, right? Mm. The only one that I find where most people are different is fighters. Okay. I don't know why. I think because fighters lay everything on the table and they have nothing to prove. You know, it's something you know? which I, you know, I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. Yeah. Like I listen to Rogan and they yeah. have the fighters on and I've watched YouTubers when they get into the ring. It's like, why do you need to do that? You're already yeah. a huge successful yeah. YouTuber and now you want to go boxing. Yeah. And it, I, more I watch them and listen to them, I get that because you, you, you lay it all out there. Mm. Especially in real life. Mm. Like it's one thing when you're having to kind of sell a fight and something and you have to act like a bit of an asshole and stuff. Mm. But every fighter I know, like I remember sitting down once and, and I know a lot of UFC fighters and, and you know, UAE warriors and, and boxers and stuff. And I was very personal friends. I was sitting in a room once and we were all having dinner and I was looking around and I was like, I'm sitting in a group of killers right now. Mm. Like all, every one of these guys is a killer, dude, and zero fear and everything. But they're the nicest, most humble, fun guys. Like most fighters would try and stop a fight, like real fighters mm. would try and stop a fight outside, then actually try and start a fight, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the only sports where once you get to a certain level of skill and you know what you can do, you, there's nothing to prove. You're not going to, like if some guy comes up to you in the streets, like, oh, I can beat you, you'll be like, all right, mate, great. Yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Inside your head, you're like, I would squash you like a grape. But yeah. inside, it's crazy, dude. Mm. Yeah, I have a lot of spirits for these guys, especially to see that the humbleness of being beaten by your opponents mm. and then getting up and shaking the hand and, and carry on. Yeah, it's uh, most fights end like that, even if they're having the mad, you know, the, the pre fight. Yeah, they hate each other and everything. But after the fight, you know, they're hugging each other and showing respect and that. And they're like, you know. I, I can't say from experience, but I, I, because I've never done that to yeah. lay it all out there. You know, the closest thing you have is on track. And I would, when there's a good move done on me, I'd be like, oh, fair play. That. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that like, was pretty yeah, sick. Yeah. Like, you've done me, you've done me like, you made me look stupid there. And I respect that, how difficult that is. Mm. Yeah. But that, I think fighting is the rawest form of that. Yeah. Because there's no external equipment. It's just you. Yeah. yeah. Hand to hand combat. It's cr dude, that's crazy. I think I need to try some of that eventually. Yeah, do it, bro. Whenever you're here, dude, mm. I'll send you to all the jiu-jitsu places, man. It's amazing, honestly. Mm. It's the best thing. One thing I want to ask, and it's a common theme amongst sports, especially young black children, young mixed-race children. Um, something that I kind of do, because my, my three children, they're all mixed-race as well. Did you experience any indirect racism? When you no. were in, in that sport, because a lot of sports like golf and, and these kind of things, it's a very kind of one-sided thing when it comes to that. So when mm -hmm. you get a Tiger Woods coming into the golf club, do you know what I mean? They're like, who's this little, mm. do you know what I mean? This kid here. Did you ever get that in the motorsport world? Is that, or is it, was it quite advanced? Were they quite advanced in that there? When you arrived, it wasn't like a big thing. So like all my childhood, I've had my, father talked to me and my brother about um his experience in sport he was a footballer for 13 years professionally mm -hmm. and he would tell us stories of how certain games 
there would be, I don't know, 30,000 people in the crowd and they're all chanting monkey noises mm. at my dad. My dad would play up to it, but it he felt it. It's He felt that, um, oh, that negative energy on you because when you talk about that, it's it still plays. You wouldn't talk about it if it wasn't a thing, but I think mm. you talk, spoke to me and my brother about it to prepare us for life. And I always... And even now, didn't like being told that because that's not my reality. Mm. And in motorsports, directly to my face, I don't know what people say behind my back. Mm. I don't pay attention to that. But to my face, I haven't had it. I look different. I've lived raced in Japan for five years. Mm. Nobody looked like me. <laughs> Nobody looked like you. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's all in Japan. It's yeah. all, everybody speaks Japanese. I'm comfortable being that because i all i care about is my performance and being respected in my industry for my skill not because how i look mm. however um you know one of the biggest motivating factors i think for any sports person is having a chip off your shoulder and the argument of pulling the race card is very easy to do now mm. very easy to do mm. For and my eyes, ne negatively, you should be, it's a sport, you should be, your accolades should be done on your skill mm. and your talent and what you achieve, not because you happen to look a certain mm. way. I don't believe that at all. But when I won the academy, the guy that finished second was very salty. Mm. Very salty guy. And this is when Facebook was a thing. And he started talking some smack on Facebook, saying that <laughs> I fitted the the narrative oh, at the time and okay. I read that and 19 year old me uh, used it as a fuel I took it in the in the wrong way but I used it as a fuel and I said to myself nobody of my experience which was zero never done carting never done any track days is going to achieve what I'm going to achieve nobody has but I flipped it. It was a few. It was, okay, I'll show you. And I, But I was unsure whether it was true or not. Mm. Which is why I was, for years, I was blinkered. I was like a blinkered racehorse where I didn't care about my, well, a lot of things took the back, a lot of things took a back seat. Family, friends, girls, relationships, life. Just tunnel vision took, in the zone. Yeah, really. Really took a back seat. Because I still had this chip going up. What if he was right? What if they were right? So, okay, mm. no. I'm a flip. They're not going, even if it was true, they, I'm the right, I'm yeah, the guy. Yeah, they indirectly, yeah. Yes, yeah, I'm yeah. the guy. And, um, but that only gets you so far. You can only use that fuel for such a certain amount of time. And I know now it's not true. Mm. I'm not there because I am the token black guy. It's not mm. a thing. I'm there because. Um, I've got receipts, yeah. but you don't, you can't think like that. So <laughs> I got, got the receipts. receipts this day, this exactly. day, this day. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I don't know what you could call that, but I, to my face, no, I haven't be haven't experienced something to say, I know you can't do this because you happen to look like that. Mm. Um, but I don't know what's going on in people's minds, but I, I, I never think about it. Mm. I, uh, you judge me on my, my dad used to say, you know, let your my, my, let my feet do the talking when you play football. Yeah, yeah. For the racing, it's like let your driving do the talking. I don't. Controversy is not. I'm not interested in that. Yeah. I'm not interested in drama. It's just want to be respected for my speed and talent, um, and on merits, nothing else. Um, you know, I've yeah it's even difficult for me to talk about no, things, yeah, that, yeah. things that i've done because it's like i just feel i've got more to do yeah i've yeah, got yeah. more things to do i'm not done i've got so much more i need to accomplish and the movie's fantastic great amazing but okay what's next mm. what's the the uh the age of the shelf life of a driver when it comes to driving because every sport's different right you get like you know football 35s unless you're a, a Messi or something what's mm. the uh the shelf life of a race I think it's longer than, for sure it's longer than footballers um, we look at Fernando Alonso, he's racing the highest level of motorsport in mm. Formula One, and he's in his, I think he's 40, maybe he's 41, I'm not sure, but he's in his 40s. You um, said that like that's old, I'm 41, mate, come on. It's not old, it's a number. And because now you know, we have such access to 
training methods and nutrition yeah, yeah. and all these external things which can make you prolong your um, physical capabilities. Yeah. The mind is always sharp. Yeah. Um, but there's other things to keep the body, the rest of you sharp as well. In my, the motorsport which I compete in, which is <clears throat> prototypes, GT cars, uh, being paid as a professional manufacturer driver, which is like being associated with a brand, a manufacturer brand, you, you can do it. This guy's still racing in the mid 40s, wow. mid to late 40s, associated with a brand. And then if you can, you can race until you're. 60s if you want to maybe mm. not as a manufacturer but if you're yeah. bringing sponsors and whatnot you could still be competitive it's yeah. uh it's different it must be a relief when you do sign one of those kind of contracts because like we said it's not a cheap sport like i know a couple of uh friends of mine here they race formula three formula two uh mm. girls and the, th the thing that they say to me is like the hardest thing like if a sponsor doesn't come through or something like that, because you get that where they they're going to sponsor you, and then they at the end they're like, no, no, we're gonna we're not going to push this. Like that kind of worry of always having to make sure you can find a way to keep this going through these sponsors. Like it must be such a relief off your head knowing that okay, I'm with the manufacturer, so it's kind of like at least mm. covering me on that side. Well, I've been associated with Nissan and the Academy for uh, I think it was twelve years. It stopped at the end of last year. I stopped it. End of okay. 2020. Any reason why? No growth. Okay. It's not Who did you go growth. to now? That's what we're working on. So oh. now I'm freelance. I'm, I'm a free okay. agent, not Lula, freelance. Lula, Lula's looking at me like, but, not saying anything, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but you talk about the sponsors, yeah. and I haven't experienced that because I've been in the bubble since yeah. the academy yeah. for uh, for 12 years, 12 or 11 years. So I'm... Now working with people who are experienced in business and putting the package, I'm I'm learning as I go right now. Mm. I haven't been, I haven't experienced that. This is the first time I've experienced that. The worry of putting something together for to be attractive to a race team for the following season. I'm very blessed to have the movie. My name's quite. I mean, the movie right helps right a lot, though, doesn't but it? It's right? not like okay, yeah. here you go, mate. Yeah, it, is, yeah. it is a contract. It's like there's so much more. Yeah, I'm still developing in that area. Whereas people have been doing it a long time. They're there. I'm still fresh, and I'm working with the right people to mm. elevate me and uh, put that together. But yeah, it's not. It's not. You know, when you come to uh, when you're with a team, when you're with a manufacturer, and you come in towards the end of the season, your seasons have been a bit um, average, and it gets to October, and you're like, oh. mm. are they gonna? <laughs> yeah, are we gonna? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's. Um... That's when you start being nice to everyone in the pit, and everything. Hey, great job! Thanks. I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's uh, it's. A, it's positioning and yeah. uh, I've, I've learned a lot over the last few years especially with the political game that goes on in motorsport um, especially living in Japan it's uh, part of it it's mm. part of all sports and I need to get better to be get you need to get better at it yeah so I'm still developing in that area getting better and yeah to be more attractive to a team because okay if you have the speed you have the talent you have all this stuff but what else can you bring alongside that in motorsports it's it's always cash yeah it's always cash and what yeah if you have a team which is a bit more they see the vision media the other opportunities it's, i guess it's better mm. but a lot of the time it's okay no great but what are you what are you bringing yeah so motorsports it's for people that I'm still learning. I didn't know for a while because I've been in that bubble of Nissan how much things cost. Mm. Yeah, you were just like, ah, oh, I, I scratched the car. They're like, oh, here's another one. Why? Well, even before you scratch the car, yeah. it's all your equipment. Yeah, yeah. All your equipment, you have to pay for £70 for a pair of socks, fireproof wow. socks. Or well, all you're under your helmet is three grand. Wow. You probably need two helmets, really. You and you're, to... you, they were obviously paying for all that then. The, yeah. The Academy was. Yeah. But now Nissan like... and Sony Academy, yeah, they were paying for that. Well, I mean, I remember going to the first time, it was called uh, Grand Prix Race Raceway at Silverstone. And, um, I mean, just they just sell racewear. Just walking in and they filmed it as well. So it's out there. It should be out there on the TV series yeah. of GT Academy. And uh, I was just blown away. Just Looking at the prices. Races and stuff, yeah. yeah, that's all I looked at. That's only my reference. Yeah. I don't know what that's my reference. I know what things cost. I know what the value of money is. Yeah. So I'm looking at this and going, well, a pair of socks from, from Marks and Spencer's, 
I don't know. Five yeah, yeah, yeah for, for three. Why, right? are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. why are these 70? Yeah. It makes <laughs> sense now why when I said to him, oh, I want one of your helmets for the set, he was like, yeah, all right, mate. You want 40K, yeah. dude. Like, it's like, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. there's been times when you get free helmets. I've had free helmets. Um, but you See, so you know how it feels. It's a nice feeling, right? Uh, yeah. When you get a free helmet. Oh, but you got so, to paint them then. So you understand that when I want a free helmet. Yeah, so you're going to know how you're going to make me feel with, a, with the helmet, right? But it's like I use those helmets <laughs> like, for multiple years. But what years. are you going to bring? Cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it's a, uh, it's very expensive in uh, the sports. Yeah. Just for your license as well. It's, I think it's like my license a grand a year every year. Well. Um, and then the the cost of the actual car itself the insurance the medical if you yeah the dude car, your medical insurance must be insane dude oh, let's not go there but it's I've been very safe touch wood yeah yeah so far okay, and um don't worry. yeah <laughs> it's uh yeah man it's not uh it, it's that area isn't really spoken about because it's so yeah yeah everyone just seems oh yeah you, you you're um they don't there's no reference. They don't have any reference until you start giving them numbers. Yeah. The things cost. You need multiple not, of those things. But you're lucky that you didn't start young. So Benjamin, who we met before, his son's a carter. Yeah. And when I was speaking to him about it, he was like, this is the most expensive hobby that yep. I could have. And I was like, the kid or the co-karting? Which one? He's like, both. <laughs> like, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's like so expensive to do, even to just go around. And it's not like, and especially once you get into it, you want your own cart, right? You don't want to keep renting carts and stuff. You want to start getting serious. Well, if you want to do... I want to win a car team. I never did, so yeah. I don't. My numbers that I'm going to say are probably they'll probably be car teams. Go, no, that's not true. Yeah, yeah. But it, the general vibe of that. So you could start karting when you're six years old, six or seven, eight. Um, if you want to compete, say British Championships, and so you don't turn up with one cart. Yeah, because if something happens, with, you need another couple. Well, like... it's not even that something happens. You turn up there with five or six chassis, and wow. then you have five or six engines. And then you pick your best. Sixteen sets of tires. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. You sort of your best end. You keep your best engines. You test. I think if I remember correctly, from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, then the the race weekend starts Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you use your other engines for the so tests, you, exactly. and then you use yours. Ah. Yeah, you use your best chassis. Yeah, your best, save your best chassis for the weekend. Save your best engines for the weekend. But if you turn up there with a one-man van with your dad in the back of your yeah. Peugeot and you're carrying a trailer with one engine, one chassis, yeah, you can go karting. You won't win. Mm. Karting, and this is, I'm, this is, I've never done it, yeah. but this is what I've been told from drivers who I've been teammates with, and they said to me, karting is it's grassroots, but it's the most unfair in terms of the, the level yeah, of playing field. Yeah, because if you come from a very rich family and stuff, you're instantly in the lead. Yeah. Yeah. So... I mean, I, the industry, like that industry probably don't like me because I'm talking about, I can just skip all that and go. Yeah, to that's true. You did your this. parents a huge favor. Like yeah. you, you got the result without any of the, <laughs> that stuff that came before exactly. it. It's not like I don't, I, there's value in that because yeah. I did still do karting after the academy because yeah, yeah, yeah. they put me in a cart to learn how to race in the wet and I got a lot of value but from that. But they put you in a cart. Yes. Your parents didn't have no, to buy the cart and get a session. Not at yeah, all. Yeah. I didn't know you could do karting outside. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that was a thing. I did indoor go karting at the raceway at the time it was called for my friend's birthday. Yeah, yeah. That was what, that was my karting. Have you ever done the, uh, just a quick side, you know, in Japan, they have the, the Mario Kart racing thing, right? In real life. Have you done it yet? No. Mate, you have to do it. Get I in know. a Mario Kart, dress up as Toad or something and get a bunch of friends and drive through Tokyo with I it. I know how much energy is in a, in a car, like traveling at speed. And when you see one of those, and it's like, ah, I don't really fancy being a... Uh, but you'll be dressed as, you'll be dressed as Mario zone. though. <laughs> that guy's a difference. You've Mario, never done that. Mario You've experienced suits. some stuff in your life, but you haven't had that real stuff, bro. That ain't going to protect me with the car <laughs> yeah, coming true. to the side of me. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a pass yeah. on that. But they banned it for a while. Oh, they did? They brought it back, though. I, was man, there, I would love I to do it. that. I swear to God, I'd go to the supermarket first, buy a bunch of bananas, mate, and just get in there. I'd be throwing them all over Tokyo, man, as I'm it's driving. Rife. They're, they're everywhere, those carts. That's just crazy, dude. There's a lot of foreigners in it all the time. Just in the middle Tourists of Tourists like me who are there. Always. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. But, it, yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that because I, I, I like my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like surviving. All right, let's talk about Le Mans. Yeah. Because we have to talk about that, obviously. Mm. Um. Actually, let me change it up. What would you say so far, because this might be the answer, so I just want to rephrase it, was the your most proud moment in your career? What is joint? So winning the Academy for one on that podium. 
Um, but another one <clears throat> is my first win in Formula 3 in Japan, 2016, at a track called Okayama in the wet. And um, I won by like, it was like 25 seconds, I think. Dude, that's like a year in real life. Yeah, so I say that because I did Formula 3. It's not shown in the movie because uh, this was after the movie yeah, what yeah. shows movie shows from 2011 to 15 really whereas this was 16 mm -hmm. and uh i did formula three previously in europe um 2013 and it was incredibly difficult it's the most <clears throat> difficult phase of my career really? doing that yeah it's not shown in the movie because it it shows single seaters and it's, it it just the, the movie would need to be four hours or five hours long for everything yeah. to be fit in why would you say it was the most difficult part because uh i won the academy uh and then i went straight into gt cars and, and then gt3 mm. and gt3 cars there it's that car at the time was a big lump very um clumsy car to drive and then i did well in that and nissan were like well not nissan the academy were like okay we would like to try you in a formula three car because the teammate that i had for that year alex bunkham his father was involved in racing and he said yeah. to uh, the founder of GT Academy, Darren Cox, Jan would be good in a Formula 3 car. So they were like, okay, let's put him in a Formula 3 car. The stars are constantly aligning for you. Mm. Yeah. But the that car is, it's the best car in the world. It's a beautiful car to drive. But when you've come from something which is so cumbersome, mm. you the technique is completely different. The it's like getting in from a 4x4 four four back to a North sports really, car again. It's, yeah. It's so delicate that car. Any driver that's driven F3, they all say it's their favorite car in the world. Specifically, a chassis F30 and F314. Yeah. That's that generation of Delara chassis is it's impeccable. The car weighs 460, 470 kilos, wow. 550 kilos with you sat in it. That's the minimum weight. That's what I squat. It's not. It's, it's not very bad light at all. Car. Yeah. A lot of downforce. The wheels kind of thick wheels, but uh, stunning car. And. Um, Jumping from a GT3 car to that, to that yeah. was it was very tough because the technique was wrong. The, the entry speeds were so high. Mm. Something I never experienced for real downforce. And I did British Formula 3 and Europe, FIA Formula 3, the, the top level uh, of single-seater category at the time. And I was, I perceive myself as other people, maybe not, but me, it was, I, I couldn't get it. It didn't click. Mm. It took me oh, so long to get it clicked. And I was very thankful that in 2016, the stars aligned again for me to do that in Japan. Because when you come to Japan, they don't care what you've done. Yeah, They don't care. I, I, I did I did one race in F GP2 and did the F uh, GP3. Race at Lamar, podium, they don't care. It's like, you know, you come to my our country, yeah. you start at the bottom again yeah, yeah, yeah. and you work your way up. And but I was yourself. grateful. Yeah to drive an F3 car again. So I fought for the championship. I finished, I lost the championship in the last race because it came second. But that year, things clicked. It was like, okay, now I've got this. Mm. So winning my first race in that car, because I've had the experience three years prior where it was so tough. The best result was, I think it was like fifth or sixth, something like that. Someone would check on your Wikipedia and kind of say, no, it was seventh. Yeah, yeah. But it was it always will very, be one person, yeah. very tough, really tough. And um, so in 16... Um, it all aligned, it all clicked. And so that's why it's my, my proudest moment because I remember doing the race and we had the guy on the pit wall like lean over and tell you the gap to second place. Mm. In my head, the challenge was, okay, every lap, I want it to be plus one second to the guy behind yeah. and it was. And uh, yeah, that was my proudest. Long story about that. That's my the reason why. Yeah. It must be an incredible feeling. Um to see your parents that proud of you in general, especially coming from your situation where you have also that you just made that happen out of nowhere kind of thing. Yeah. I, I never really thought about it that deeply, but I know they're proud. I can see mm. my dad. He doesn't say much because he says a lot <laughs> uh, in life generally, yeah. but in most sports he stays out because he says, this is not my world. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Whereas before he'd always say, no, you should do this. You should do this. You should do that. Was he, was he on your case to, to be a footballer as well? I, in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. He was. I mean, I think when I didn't make it, he was secretly like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he, 
he doesn't get involved in the motorsport because he knows that I'm living my dream and it's, this is my purpose because he can see I act the same way as he did when he was playing, doing mm. his game. Um, he can see that flicker in the eye. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's all, it's my, it's car, it's motorsport, cars and women. That's my only mm. interest deeply. Yeah. Um, that I, I feel I not all at the same time, but it's like, a... uh, I mean, it's challenging, <laughs> but it, that'd be better. That'd be great. If they can create yeah. a race series. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the, you know what, with all the reality TV shows, yeah. there might be one there that you, that you, you know, miss I mean, out on. Say that. You want to get that cash quick for the race, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so he can see that, um, I know that I know the proud because I know I'm doing. I know I'm doing my my family name, mm. my justice. I think a lot about ancestry. Mm -hmm. I'm very fascinated with my family name and my history. My granddad, um, he died quite early when I was young. But a very fascinating guy, someone who took care of his family. My dad has a, a lot of brothers and sisters, mm. and they came from St. Kitts. Okay. And uh, he went to work in America. He provided for his family when my grandmother when he passed away he had you know resources to fund mm. the care home for years mm. and it's something which i think about a lot of like he represented his name and his family in the right way and i feel the same way with my motorsport it's okay it's not just me yes i do it because i love doing it but also i need to do it in the right way that i don't tarnish my family name it's uh it's important to me so I mean, the next step, I need to have a family. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But uh, for, for right now, I, I think I've laid some good foundations yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah, dude, that's incredible. Like, honestly, like there's so many things. Just watching the movie and I watched it. I made sure that I waited till last night to watch it. Okay. Because I was going to watch it before. And then I was like, no, I want this to be fresh. Like I want that feeling to be like super still in me so many things in it that thing with the whole taking the lines and stuff was that real or was it made for the movie half truth because it's okay. not specific to Le Mans but uh, at, there's a track in Japan called Fuji Speedway and uh, okay. I created a new wet in the when it's wet and when it's dry the racing lines are different yeah because when it's dry uh, the rubber Six. goes into the yeah, tarmac yeah. and when it, water goes on it gets very slippery so you have to do a different line. And I created this new line at turn one at Fuji where it kind of happened by luck and chance because I was out, kind of out of control entering this hairpin corner mm. after a long straight. And um, on the edge of the track of the white line, then on at Fuji at turn one, there was a, um, we call it grass crete, like uh, concrete. Uh, like Astro rocks. Death. No, like, uh, like rocks. Okay. It wasn't... It wasn't um, asphalt it was like rocks yeah so i was like kind of out of control and then it's like okay i need to i need to turn now so i turn and the front left tire gripped on this rock this, mm. these bunch of rocks and it rotated the car so well and i gained i was a te two tenths or a tenth and a half up on in sector one wow. than everybody anybody else and uh, i just did every lap and my the team manager at the time was like, well, you, you keep missing the apex of turn one when it's worse. I like, know this is my line. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the other, this, I'm You'll see later when you watch it back. I'm doing this on purpose. I'm yeah. new to Japan at that time. Yeah. And there was a driver called Satoshi Motoyama who was a legend. He's still a legend now. And he was like, I've never seen this line at turn one before. And he's like, I'm going to do this wow. race line. So you continued after the first accident, that first uh, slip. It, when it was You worse. continued to do that again. When it was worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. there's a half truth. Nor at Le Mans, no. Yeah. That didn't specifically happen. And it wasn't from the game where you realized on the game but that... But there is, uh, at the same circuit at Fuji, there's yeah. a corner called Tim 5. It's called uh, 100R. Cause it's the corner radius uh, degree, yeah. 100R. And it's uh, quite a long, fast corner. And before going to Japan, I'd obviously played so many times on GT. That was my... I did a tight line through there all the time. Yeah. That was my line. And I never changed that line. So it was different to everybody else's. Yeah. But that was always my line yeah. so there's a half truth in it yeah 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 how much do you um this might be a silly question but i'm not a racer so Go i like to it. kind of find that stuff you know bobsledders bobsleds yeah. yeah you know when they're practicing for the thing they, they do that kind of like so they learn the track and yeah. they know that all right there's a right now there's a right how much of the track did, did you did you ever study like actively as in purposely know like when you're doing a track you know every single turn yeah. Is that just from the game or do from you game, kind of pre go there and be like, okay, I have to learn this track properly. Otherwise, 
obviously you're not just on a new track you're just trying to figure it out as yeah. you go along but I mean how much extra emphasis do you put on that that's the that separates the people that are kind of okay good and the ones I actually achieve yeah. so after the academy uh, when I first started racing so doing those races to get my license my racing license a authority is called the msa yeah. motorsports association and when you sign up to your race to get your race license you get a book of all the circuits in the uk and it has a detailed breakdown of like where the bathroom is where you go to sign on but then specifically on the corner descriptions of each circuit that was my bible wow. for a good mm. year i studied this every night so i knew i'd never been there before i've driven it on simulators but i wanted to know every night I've just been reading this book, writing notes. I've still got it in my room. I need to wow. open it and actually have a look at what I actually wrote down. I've got notes on my little, phone. Yeah, little thing here. Notes on my phone from 2011. Wow. Still on my phone now. And a notepad that's in my drawer from, again, from the same era. And I was, I don't, I, I need to go back to that really. But when you're fresh, it's like you need to, it's not automatic. You mm. need to write things down for that to stick Whereas now it's, I kind of know what you know I need it is, to yeah. do. But for example, for every time I go to a track, regardless if I've driven there 20 times, 30 times, I'd always walk the track. You walk it? Walk it, yeah. Okay. Is this something that a lot of people do or is just... Europe, yes. Yeah, Japan, yeah. I've noticed no. I don't yeah. know why. I always thought that was weird. When I went to Japan, they were like, we don't walk the track. I'm like, really? You don't walk... Did you ask them why or no? I, I think it's just... They you just accept do it. it, yeah. And then yeah. we started to do it, yeah. but... I went up to another level that no way you don't do it because yeah. you're, not, you're not allowed. You're okay. not allowed to do it because they have to. Tr do you have rules in Japan yeah, for yeah. some reason? But yeah, anyway. But Europe, every time F1 do it, you watch any yeah, F1, yeah, yeah. and yeah. there'll be photos of the guys walking the circuit with their engineer, with a load up for notepad of videos, going through corner for corner, checking if the track has been altered, if there's been new tarmac laid, the curves if they're different, if the same. Man, like yeah. where even you know basic stuff if your car's on fire like where can you pull it yeah you're always putting where, stuff yeah stuff like that it's crazy where can you even if you have brake failure if after a long straight what can you do to, so, yeah. yeah do i do i just ram the car into the wall here or you know or do i let it roll a little bit and you go think about think about that stuff really yeah. if it happens it can happen but you got to think quick dude and that's the thing with racers they have super because you obviously do a lot of reaction timing uh, training right so i used to I used to. I th I have my routine now where I have my simulator at home, yeah. and that's what I use to keep. But that, that is reaction timing it as is, well, but right? There is Indirectly, you can do, but yeah, not with the it's tapping stuff. Yeah. Gimmicky for Catch me, a tennis ball really. and bounce one while you're throwing that's, the other one yeah, again. Yeah, 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 that's great. But yeah. there's things you can do with your hands. It's like, uh, for me, I have my routine yeah. and I'm I'm good. Yeah, I have my vis some visualization. I do some things. <clears> I do um, Kenny G. Routine, Kenny G. Yeah. Kenny G. Mate, it's insane that the whole, you know, the 10,000 hours thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, Bruce Lee says the guy that knows that practices one kick a thousand times is better than a guy who knows ten, uh, like a thousand kicks. Yep. Do you know what I mean? I was literally speaking to my brother about this in the car. So every morning I drop the kids to school, I go to the gym every single morning. Nothing, it never changes. I train in Jamiro Beach Hotel, they go to school in Emirates Hills. There's a thing about driving that once you drive, a certain way every time and i was telling him that i was kind of daydreaming but driving still normal speeds mm -hmm. and i remember just leaving the school and then when i looked up again i was at the gym and i couldn't remember the whole journey all the way there and i was like wow my body kind of just went on autopilot because it's done this so much literally every single day i mean don't do this at home kids it's not safe but like i didn't plan to do it it's not like i was watching a movie or, or on my phone i just kind of zoned out for a bit and then just ended up in exactly where i was supposed to be have you ever had that when you're driving yeah it's, the it's zone. weird right it's the zone it's what you want to get yeah, but i mean what, what was my zone i was going to the gym like it wasn't like a, a race or anything like that it was just oh, it's, you're in that, in that state of mind where you're completely relaxed Cause, yeah because i'm so used to the drive yeah. right that's what we aim to be and i get any sportsman it's yeah. that's what i'm sure we've talked to some fighters they yeah, it's yeah. the same thing it's that's what the state you're most avatar state i've never watched avatar you haven't watched avatar no no, no but not that not that movie that they made with the blue 
Oh, I'm yeah? talking about Avatar The Last Airbender, the cartoon. No. I'm about to change your life forever. Okay. Ludo, have you seen it? How oh, yeah? have you not showed him? Okay. Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm about to change your right. life, bro. You're never going to lose a race again. Okay. I'm, I'm in, Mark I'm my words, dude. It is the most amazing. It was a Nickelodeon cartoon, believe it or not. Yeah. But they tried to make a movie out of it and just butchered it. But it's the most amazing cartoon you'll ever watch. I am going to call you in three weeks. And I'm going to start asking you questions. And you better have answers, dude. Because I want to know that you've watched okay. it, dude. It is incredible, dude. Oh, I feel so good that I've introduced that to you. I feel like I've just got into the GTA Academy. I can't uh, believe... You need to remind me, Ludo. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to send it in the group. If you're into it... Yeah, I'm going to send it in the group, dude. It's it's okay. amazing, dude. Um, very spiritual cartoon. Very... Um, I'll give you a quick thingy. So, four tribes. Earth, water, fire, and uh, uh, air. Mm. So, Ang, he's a, he's a monk who was from the air tribe. He gets frozen in ice for thousands of years. He comes back all the tribes are warring against each other. So he has to basically, he's the avatar. He has to save all the tribes and bring them together. Incre I'm not even going to get into it because this whole podcast will be about avatar now. Let's let's skip that. What is your favorite track by far? I have two. No, you can't have two. You uh, have I can't have two. I, if you I could only race on one it. track again forever. Uh, Nibu Green. Yeah, why? There's nothing else. It's There's nothing else like it. It's, the other track I was going to say is like it which okay. is why it's there he's like there's nothing else like it the other ones like it but it's, it's just smaller yeah, but yeah. it's just intense um but no begin because it's you have to respect that place mm. there's no runoff um it's very narrow the sensation of speed is the most i've had in any circuit because the track is narrow they have trees lining the barriers so you feel like you're doing 150 miles an hour, whereas you do 150 miles an hour on, say, Silverstone. It's like, yeah, because it's so wide, so right? Wide. It feel like, yeah. The gr track is great, but it's like when you're overtaking other cars at Nürburgring, I mean, the speed difference can be 50 or 60 miles an hour. Mm. And like you're, it's, the heart is like, this is sick. This yeah. is, when you're in a train of cars, like I've done this on the game so many times, hundreds of laps, maybe thousands, and I'm doing it in real life, you're on a train and it's, oh man, it's just the best. Doing slipstreams and stuff. Yeah. Taking, taking other people's slipstreams. It's and... mega. But the other one is Sugo. Sugo in Japan, which is like um, Nürburgring. Yeah. Yeah. How did you... When you first got into the car, obviously you weren't driving at the speeds that you were driving now. Right? But how do, um, how do you deal with it? Because it's it's not a joke when you're going at those speeds. I mean, being fresh to it. When you're first doing it and you actually try to turn the corner and your face goes... Mm. Like that from the, it's the, the best and stuff. feeling in the world. Yeah. Like, I like I'm somebody who likes responsibility. I love that. So yeah. when you are in charge of something which is so powerful, mm. car it's a, carries a lot of energy, and mm. especially if it has a big engine, it's loud. You smell the fuel. You smell the clutch. Hopefully not, but brakes and gearbox oil. It's yeah. it's a living thing. Yeah, living thing. And uh, when you're in charge of that and you're, you're the person that gets to the responsibility of driving it as fast as you can. Yeah. And then there's a whole team that puts it together. So if you shunt it, it's like, okay, you've got to yeah, yeah. answer to them now. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. Do you love still it. have like pinch me moments when you're there or are you kind of like, okay, this is what I do now? Earlier this year I, I did because I haven't been racing as much as previous seasons mm. um so when i first did my ra first race this year back in may i love racing i have a lot of respect for it and, and to do this job is is a privilege really but when you've been out of the game for um for a period of time and you jump back into it and it's you get to motion so oh, this is what i'm put on earth yeah. to do is yeah. to race this racing car the best of my ability yeah. um so yes it's not like I'm already aware of what I'm doing is mm -hmm. very... So I don't do it all the time. I don't need to because I'm, I'm aware this is not normal. Yeah. It's not normal life. How all. did COVID affect the driving? Uh, in Japan at the time, it was 2020, and they just delayed the racing season. And we had no fans for, I think, four of the seven races. So no fans, no spectators. So you turn up to track and it's... In Japan, the fans are real they fans. It, they yeah. know you. They yeah. know you like really in depth. Like in Europe, it's a bit different where 
They know you because you're a driver and you got a race suit on. Whereas in Japan, they know you because you you like their tweet on in, on Twitter yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. in 2015. Like real fans, they've got a yeah. screenshot of it and they show you. Uh, and they love their cars, dude. They do. Like, the car culture over there. Yeah, yeah, it's like um, Fast UAE. and Furious in real life. Yep. Yeah. It's like UAE. They're really into their cars. Yeah. Really into them. So to have no spectators, it, the vibe is a bit weird. Because it's like, yeah, okay, you go and racing. We have autograph sessions for people. But also we have a, a um, one on a Saturday evening for just for children. Uh, fat, uh, kid zone, it's called. Yeah. In Super GT. And you just have thousands of kids wow. there with their families eight o'clock at night signing for an hour and a half taking photos within the cars uh they always get big crowds it's very i love i love japan it's a very special place for me i really rate it highly in my career um they do motorsport very well over there they don't change so much they don't need to really because their pro their product works they have mm. huge fans um every race um everybody gets paid the sponsors are happy the teams are happy of the japanese manufacturers they're all good they're all happy you have the tire manufacturers you have a tire war constant development of the engines in that championship um but when the, when it was there with no fans in 2020 it was very weird weird huh yeah it was very strange didn't like it there was a lot of, and then when they were introduced back uh, so everybody's on the mass and it's all mm. sh distant stuff you can shake hands and now but, it's normal. Yeah, now it's back to normal. Even the noise, like once you've kind of finished the race and you get out of the car, it's kind of silence. Yeah. Like that must be really yeah, weird. Yeah, it was, wasn't good. It wasn't, yeah. But uh, I was, we still to race. Um, we didn't. We usually have a race abroad as well. We have a race in Thailand. That, But that, that was binned. It was all mm. in Japan. And a lot of the circuits were the same. We couldn't race in certain circuits. So we raced like three times at the same circuit throughout yeah, the season. Yeah. So it was a bit in there. Do you think um, it's going to be easier for you to... I mean, we can cut this out if there's future plans um, to get a Japanese manufacturer as your next manufacturer because you live there kind of thing for you live you lived there for a long time because of the whole Nissan thing. There's a lot of history there. Yeah. Um, really, we'll see. I've planted, we planted some seeds. I spent some time there recently talking to teams, but. Uh, There's, you have the three major manufacturers, Honda, Nissan, Toyota. It's very difficult to sometimes switch, mm. especially when you've been branded, would as you, I have. Would you feel a bit like... Uh, Me, I don't care. You don't care? Because I've so been, you wouldn't be I've, like... No, I've been through the process of being, I am a hardcore this guy. Mm. So you wouldn't think that they're like, oh, betrayal. You literally went to our neighbors. like It happens, yeah. it happens uh, throughout there. It's just the... You're like, look, I just want to race. I don't care who puts me in what. I just want to. It's uh, it's a general rule of thumb, but it can be done. Mm. But let's see. Like I'm working yeah. on that and um, I will go with opportunities. So if Mate, somebody's go, opening open arms. Go to Saudi go because they seem like they're doing everything right now, man. It's uh, they. There's a championship, which is just a European championship uh, called Fanatec GT Challenge, I think. But they're mainly mm. racing in Europe. They have a race in Saudi. Yeah. Now, I think it's this year. Dude, Sa Saudi are taking over yeah, everything. This year. They're really pushing hard. They're putting money to yeah. everything. Like, any idea you have, just go on holiday in Saudi and just stand in the right place and they'll be like, oh. Yeah, they're, they're pushing the motorsport hard. Yeah. So F1, you know, it's they've got that track, but now even other levels of motorsport, they want to be involved, yeah. which is great because motorsport, yeah, I'm, oh, I'm glad. Good. Mm. I love cars. I love motorsport. Have you ever uh, raced in Yaz Island circuit? Yeah, a couple of yeah. times. Do you like it there? Good track. Yeah. I raced it two times in <clears throat> GP3. I raced it once. Um, it was the worst experience of my life. It wasn't in a car. It was for something called Desert Warrior Challenge, which is like one of those Spartan races. And it was in the middle of the summer. And we were running on a racetrack trying to do a 10K race. <laughs> it oh, was yeah. the worst thing ever that's in the a long world. circuit as well dude it was the worst like everything was hot yeah. there was one fun bit where they made you jump in the water and then come back out again but <laughs> i was just like this is not ideal this is not what i want to do mate honestly nah, that, do you run it in the daytime or the night time i don't run ever it was the dumbest decision i ever made my friends were like let's do it there's a warrior challenge i was mm. like what is it they're like we'll all have fun we'll run together there's some obstacles i got there and then like literally and i've done it like four of them and every single time i get like probably half a kilometer into it and then I, my mind just goes, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? I used to do them a lot more when I was single because mm. 
there was other girls running. So I was like, okay, <laughs> there's a reason to be here. Yeah. And then I was like, nah, mate, this, this is the dumbest. Nah, I don't like running. By training, yeah. I don't like running. Yeah, I don't run. It's I used worst. to run. I used to run. I'm too in COVID. my own head. I'm too in my own head. I can't. I start thinking oh, yeah? about weird stuff when I'm running, like aliens and... and I was like, the Freemasons are taking over. Like, just, okay, just like, I can't be alone with myself. Those videos. Yeah. That the what is it? Uh, was it CIA? They released those videos recently this year. With, what with the cake uh, alien? That little Does, that the, Mexican the, the, alien. No, 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 not that. I I say, I that's I that's the, like a birthday cake. I, I don't like, know what that was. That, yeah, yeah, that's not real. Obviously, I just know yeah, that. Yeah. But the, that little pill, those pills. That moves in. Oh yeah, yeah. The, 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 the fighter jet pilot but was yeah. trying to follow. I believe that. I believe that. Uh, do you know what it is? Because I people kind of say be- the same I thing. Kind, yeah, I kind of believe in it. I think there's going to be aliens for sure. Mm. Whether it's us traveling back from the future or whether or whatever, I'm not. I'm not in a mm. place to say. But what I think now is, I, I I believe that they're gonna fake it, man. I believe that either holograms or either they've figured out, like there was a crash, they've taken the equipment, made their own ones, and now they're gonna just throw them around the place just to get their own agenda done. Us. Yeah, we're doing it. I, uh, when I say us, I say America. Because yeah. they're the only douchebags that would do that kind of stuff. I don't know, man. Like, when I... I, I, can't, I was watching a Rogan podcast with two gentlemen who were... It was the pilot. The pilot's been on there. Yes. As yeah, well, yeah. I've seen uh, that one as well. Name? Yeah, yeah. But, man, like, when you just hear... And, and also, the, the, I was watching this late, so I shouldn't remember the people, but forgive me. They were talking about... Uh, these two gentlemen were talking about other nations that have spotted the yeah, same pill the same and thing, there yeah. was a russian fighter pilot who sh- tried to engage with yeah. one of those pills and it shot and it stopped. down yeah, yeah. that and the americans they haven't had that but to yeah. hear that it's like that's it's weird i was actually mentioned cool. this on the last podcast as well when i was speaking to a f- couple of friends of mine that are comedians and, and i was like it is strange that when you get stuff like pyramids and they're in mm. 20 different countries on a very specific area mm. and they're all older than you know things that we experience but they just happen to all point to the same place and happen to be on the same ley line and happen to be it's it's very weird i feel like there's a like somebody kind of ripped a couple of pages out and of, of history and kind of like just like yeah figure out it's interesting it's fun I, to think about yeah like when you hear the accuracy required for the pyramids because the pyramids it, uh, it's like a the tilt angle. dude Every, yeah yeah, yeah. All, everything all the angles all that the, stuff the yeah. machinery required to machine in such a block um, the tolerances are tiny yeah, yeah that we couldn't do that today dude the weight of them the, not just that the space in between the blocks yeah. as well and all that stuff it's, it's he's probably having a bloody field day man every time he's like it's not a conspiracy it was this like that I'm just like look I know it is like I, mm. I love that stuff Look, there's no, there's no, don't let the Stop truth get in the way of a good story, man. There's technology that we had dude, previously that we don't have now. Dude, loads of... There is, there, there, there's stuff. beams like in the Babylon pyramid. Babylon and yeah. that. I'm all interested there's in that. There's beams in the pyramid that are up in one of the chambers that are so heavy that they don't understand how, A, they got them in there, lifted them up, and have got them... Mm. It's not blue tech that they're using. I'll tell you that for a fact, bro. Mm. That's nuts. What, wait, what is that uh, other car racing that they do, which I think is nuts... Where they race on the gravel and there's another guy with them going left, right, left, right. There's oh, just rally, rally, dude. Yeah. That's dangerous as hell, man. No, that's uh, I think they're the best drivers in the world. That's those guys. when you see them because they come across a turn and then the car's in the air for like ten seconds and then it lands and turns around. Yeah. And Did you see that clip with the guy who got the stone, the rock? No. Oh my goodness, dude. I have to say, it's hilarious. It's one of the champions in their racing. And all of a sudden, it's like a perfect camera moment. All you hear is, oh, like that. And then the commentators are like, it's slowing down. What's happening? Whatever. And they stop the car. They bring the window down. And the driver's like, you got the, the, the rock game. He's up his asshole. Is this ah. up his asshole? Have you seen it? Yes. <laughs> He's like, all the way up his asshole. And the guy's just sitting there like that. I think he was, so it must have pinged through the thing while they were driving. This guy, his, his English was great. It's Marcus Grumholm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a German guy, right? Ah, uh, he's some Scandinavia yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was bloody I've hilarious. Seen that. Like, what they do is nuts, dude. Mm. Like, the sensation of speed is what is impressive because everything's so close. Yeah. Um, like, you, you're doing, they're not as fast as, say, Circuit racing, but because your margin of error is, is yeah, yeah. way smaller, and like the if you go off, you not, hit a tree, yeah. you don't hit a barrier, and it bounces yeah. you off. You stop. Yeah, <laughs> you do 120, you will stop to. But zero. why? Here's a question: Why 
is a guy next to him there when they'd have the technology to have a guy on the so just to get rocks rocks up the house as well. Right? <laughs> so they have over a a rally, say a rally Finland. Um, they'll have circuits routes designated that they're going to do. Maybe that I don't know how many exactly. Somebody could tell me in the comments. Um, say if it's five circuits or six circuits over a weekend, they have a recce, so they drive a road car on the circuit, mm. and the guy, the, the co-driver, would take notes. They'll do it together, they drive the road car, and they'll take notes. Okay, this corner's... They have numbers. They have uh Yeah, because they're saying, codes. They're saying yeah, it's all random code. codes so as they're five driving by. Yeah, yeah. something, and depending on the person, I don't know exactly what, what it means because I'm not that, yeah. I haven't done that. But uh, they have a language between them which dictates the radius of the corner. If there's a if there's a crest or a jump or if there's a dip or, if, or it's a no cut, don't cut yeah. here or cut available. Yeah, and they do that for every single corner. So those notes are specific to the that track, one track, yeah. the course. Of course, sometimes they do the same course over multiple years, so they'll probably use the same notes. But a lot of the time, because it's a normal road, it changes, it changes. right? Yeah, yeah. So they do it a recce. They go every every uh, stage they call it, yeah. and um, yeah. So if your notes are wrong, if you do the Eureka and you've gone, okay, this is a flat out corner, and in reality it's not a flat out corner. You're going to enter it flat out and not make yeah, yeah. make the exit. That's what happens when you don't make a note about all those little rocks, mate. <laughs> so imagine you've said, um, you know, you went five to, left. No, yeah. you went to the gym. Yeah. You went to drop your kids off, and then you went to the gym, and you did that without realizing. But imagine doing that at speed while have somebody talking new, to yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, that is the part that's very impressive because yeah. for me to be a driver and I drive a circuit and I'm, each lap is different because it always is. But I'm in my own zone. There's nobody talking to me. Sometimes the engineer talks to me um, on the radio. But I'm in my own world. But imagine doing a, a stage full speed and you've got a guy talking to you and you're having you to translate that, what he's that, saying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've done the course in the past, but it's it's always different. Translate what you're saying, and then put that into action and, apply and remember yeah, yeah. stuff as well because they say it quickly. Yeah, yeah. and in um, a few seconds before, because I'll put, if you say it at the corner, you, yeah. you're going to go off. It's imp very impressive. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. It's like the, they're it's like being at an auction, dude. Like the guys like selling yeah. stuff. Like it's wild. It's madness. So they have to be like that. They they got to spend. They have a friend who's. Um, He's Japanese and he's, I can't remember where his code was from, but they speak English and uh, they have to spend so much time together because they need to know. Yeah. They need to know each other inside out, how they operate. If the guys, if, you know, one guy's off or something, they need to know if he's off. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's nice. Yeah. The both lives depend on that. Do you get to do a lot of um, racing when it's not racing? Like, do you, do you get to go to, like, while you're here, are you going to go to the Dubai Autodrome and race some cars or, or drive some? Yeah, I think we're doing that tomorrow. We have some uh, some friends here. I'm just gonna book the. Uh, we're doing it and I think nine. We're going there. What time do you finish so I can get my lap after? I, like I want you to drive me around the. A trek. few hours. I think it's a few hours. I think it closes at eleven. But it's cool. They do it in the night. Have you seen the guy that stands there? Tell me that you've seen the, the security guard at the autodrome that does the full nine gun salute to you when you when you no. drive in. He's gonna be there tomorrow. There's one. There's one African uh, security guard who stands in the booth. Yeah. And every car that that comes out, he does the full. <laughs> he gets out, bows you, yeah, and you drive. He's hilarious, dude. Like I remember driving there with, our, with my friends the other day, and they were all. He called me up. He was like, "Did you see the salute the guy that that guy gave us?" I was like, "Yeah, he, he's a G, bro. He's a, <laughs> honestly, he's a G." Um, but yeah, so what time are you going? So I can just come and get a lap. I uh, nine, huh? nine in the evening. Oh, accidentally be there. Just, yeah, uh, just saying. Um, okay, one thing I know that everybody talks about, mm. but I want to know a different angle about it. The crash that you had. Mm. Talk me through that. I want to know the side of it from from it happening so young, right? And how much relevance your age and your mental state at the time had when that happened. So this was 2015, and uh, so I would have been maybe 25, I think it was, around that. How far into racing was it? Uh, four years. Okay. Four years. And uh, so when I was approached about the movie and I wanted to be based on my life, of course, that was in there. And it yeah. was said. 
And for me, it was like, it needs to be in there for sure as well. Because we, we had talks of it not being in there. I was like, it needs to be in there because it's my life. Otherwise, the movie reads as some sunny movie that you can do stuff and yeah. achieve things and everything's fine. Everything's you, roses all the way exactly. through. Exactly. Yeah. Life, life isn't like that. And also anybody that's achieved anything isn't your life, I'm mm. sure, is yeah. it's not like that. Um, and then you're judged on your, your recovery afterwards. So the technically it needed to be exact because of the situation because there was a spectator that was killed in that mm -hmm. in that accident. So technically you need need to be right out of respect and emotionally uh, the scenes needed to be realistic as well to what was went on because you're there I was there in the hospital by myself for long periods of time and you go through you have thoughts you have thoughts do I still want to do this. Um, thoughts about my career. Is this over? How is this going to continue? What's the next step? I need to be in a car now. Yeah, he said, otherwise um, if I leave it too long, then I'm not getting back in a car. No, I didn't think like that. I just, it was more, I need to be in a car. And thankfully, the people that were around with me, they were fantastic. They were aligned on that. So I was in a car within a week it was earlier than a week oh. and um when i saw my family come back from germany we were at the house and one thing that's come off the back of that which has been positive was we anytime we have a conversation a phone call we leave the house we always say i love you mm. just some basic stuff like that you don't know yeah. what could happen it's not like I thought this would this would ever happen. Um, I wouldn't. I believe everything that's happened that has that has happened has happened for me, for better or for worse. Mm. It's a slight mindset change. Like I never used to think like this before, but uh, I believe the person I am today is because of things that have happened for me previously and forever continue. And you, so it, your depends on how you deal with. It. I believe that anything that happens to you you're you can handle it mm. you're able to handle it otherwise you won't be presented with this yeah. matter good or or at the time bad you can get through that and become a better person but no it wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't easy at all it was the darkest moment of my life and career and um yeah it's I'm somebody who doesn't talk about the past. Mm. So I love I love the future and I love the now. I live in those moments and in sport in my career, whenever something has happened, whether that be good or bad, I learn from it, what can I've done differently, what happened and box it off. And then it's in my subconscious. And if yeah. I need to revisit it, it's it's kind of clicking. It's I've already diagnosed it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like that. And I, I know it. how to compartmentalize things yes. to just keep them in there yeah. so it's like you can easily bring it back if yeah. split second okay that happened then boom I, this is what i do now mm. but when you have to go into detail like open up that box and really go into the details of how you felt who was there what was it like technically what happened it's uh it's energy that you've already kind of yeah came to peace with I, that you're re why. Yeah, yeah. I understand why so it even it's difficult to talk about even now, but with the movie, it ha you have to do that because you need to put out something which is representative of what's actually happened to in that environment. Mm. So yeah, it was uh, the way it is in the movie. It's I'm I'm pleased with it because it's it's. Ex yeah, I watched. I watched. Literally, they showed on YouTube. So I've never seen it. Ah, oh, okay. I've never seen the scene in the movie. <coughs> When in the car, I close my eyes because yeah. even I've never seen the car. I know what happened. I can yeah, yeah. now picture it in my there's, head. There's a clip on YouTube in a short where they put one on top yeah. of the other one. I get tagged. They got this it done. Stuff. They did it exactly the same. I get tagged in this, and I understand the, <coughs> you understand the, why, the reason. But, but, but I, I kind of watch it. But I, this is what I wanted to ask. So because again, because the movie kind of brought that back, right? You were kind of, mm. it was kind of like something you closed, mm. and you were also like a lot of people don't know that you were the stunt driver for mm. in the movie for. For yourself yes so did you have to redo that part again so that, or were you kind of like i'm not coming in today mate this this one's uh no that that part when the cars are like that cg no no i know but i mean like 
preparing, you know that, okay, we're filming the scene, I'm driving the scene that yeah. this happened. Was Did that bring back any kind of... Yeah, when you go to circuits where you haven't been there in a long time, mm. it's um, for, like, I haven't been to the Nubia Ring for a long time since the accident. Mm. And, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, not easy yeah. to do. Mm. Who would be, if you could race anyone, past or present, who would you want to race? Let's 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 put four together because not just one person. We'll have we'll have four. Yeah. Who would be in your dream race with you being one of the racers in it? Colin McRae. He was a rally I driver. I said Colin McGregor for a second. Yeah, I'd say he's not, <laughs> he'd do all the shit talk before the race, but I don't think he's going to do very well. He can run his mouth really fast, but I don't mm. know about the the car. Yeah. Okay. I think Colin McRae. Um, uh, Kazuyoshi Hoshino, who was my team boss in Japan for a team called Impul, a legend. So he'd be two. Who else would I have? It's something I've never really thought about before. Mm. Uh, Senna, okay. just because. Yeah. And the third, fourth one. Mm. The fourth one, who would it be? It'd have to be somebody, maybe be somebody present. See, I don't idolize racing drivers. Mm. There's only one I idolize, and that was that was Colin McRae. But well, not, not even idolize. It was like that was the guy challenge. for me. Challenge. Who would you want to challenge yourself against? Oh, McRae. But I mean, that we need we need a fourth one. So making it be the challenge, who would be that fourth racer? Uh, okay. I was going to say James Hunt, but nah, I'm not going to say no to James Hunt. Now, this is a tough question. It has been F1 driver. Schumacher. I was thinking that. Yeah, it's uh, Schumacher. Follow up question: Who would win that race? Well, me. I back myself. That's why I choose those guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'll pick the car. And we're like, okay, yeah, you have gonna, to pick the car. It'd be, right? Mike, it'd yeah. be the car that you know I'd know pretty well, and then okay, let's go. Yeah. Um, w have you ever driven Formula One? Have no, you ever tried? I've never driven any any Formula One car. And okay. like, you want to or? Yeah, because I would like to drive, even if it was a real. Yeah, you know, we say shit box in yeah. the industry. If like a. I'm not gonna make name names because the industry yeah. is very small, but people know, like, yeah. even if it was a back of the grid team, you know car, who you are. <laughs> yeah, actually, everybody knows who you are. We don't yeah. need to say, yeah. but just to drive something which was the best that they could do is something which I'd like to be a part of. It's, okay, this is the best they could have done. Yeah. Even but, if, so, why haven't you? Is, hasn't there been an opportunity for you? No, this hasn't been an opportunity. It's been busy and. Um, it just hasn't come up. But I'm sure you could get one. I mean, I'm sure if you put it out there like, hey, guys, not, not to race in a competition, yeah. but be like, hey, guys, I really want to race the Formula One. Is there anyone that or on any track that has a spare yeah. one for the day? Or? I mean, it's I'm not going to it's to these things is to be invited. Yeah. Like, I want to be invited. I don't want to say, ah, oh, pity me. I wanna, I've never driven an F1 no, car. Pity me. It's like, yeah, hey, it's I like, that. like if you want to like, let Jan, if you want me to drive your F1 car, like yeah, I'd love to do it. Do you want me to really drive your car? Because really? I'm going to drive it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not going to be yeah. driving around Miss Daisy. Like I'm going to push that yeah. thing. But uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's something which I would like to do just for, for the sake of yeah. doing it. Because I think to reach drive the pinnacle of, of your sport yeah. if you've, in any car would be uh, an accolade. So I'd be very proud to do that. For sure. Have you yeah. ever raced Lewis? I haven't. No. No. No, never raced. We met once previously in Moscow of all places. Really? It was for like a... a it always um, happens like that, right? You, you're, you're like you live next to each other and then you end up meeting in Antarctica. You're like, yeah. how did this happen? No, we live very, yeah. very separate lives. Like, it's yeah. not like we cross paths. Like he's, he's, he's even in F1, he's, the, the, yeah. you know, such a high status person. Yeah. And, um, he is the maestro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we met uh, briefly in... Moscow because they had did, they did this thing called Moscow City Race where they closed down part of the Red Square in the city and wow. uh, we had like a drift event and some makeshift races. I was there doing some uh, some 
laps, passenger laps in some car, I can't remember which one it was. And he was there with McLaren doing his demonstration run. And the people that were with me at the time, the GT Academy people, they knew that I loved, I liked Lewis. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, they said, okay, we've got a surprise for you. We're in this hotel. And he said, are we going to meet Lewis? I was like, nah, you're, yeah. you're capping me. Like, yeah. you're, no, you're going you're gonna to meet me. I'm like, I've never been starstruck before. I don't get starstruck. I was like, oh, it's Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. I mean, we had just, he was great. A five minute, 10 minute chat, just talking about random stuff. Just, yeah, it's mate, very, challenge very him cool to a guy. GT online game, mate. Just send him a message. Be like, listen, I challenge you. GT, yeah. you choose your car. Let's get it done, mate. I'm sure he'd be up yeah, for a laugh. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of respect for that person because he's, uh, he gets a lot of. It doesn't fit the narrative. That's what it is. No, like. And even attitude things... wise, not just like uh, looks wise, but just the kind of person he is. Just... He's done so it's much very, yeah. beyond the sport, which mm. is very impressive. Because you look at what he did and when he was in McLaren and then he left to go to Mercedes, which mm. was seen as, why is he doing that? They had nobody. And then what they've achieved since. But at the same time, he signed with a management company who was, they deal with um, Hollywood management. Mm. That had never been done before. And people are like, in the industry, they're like, why is he signing to be a Hollywood, Hollywood agency? Like, why is he doing that? But he's smart. Because he expanded beyond F1. He does mm. the music, he does the fashion. Yeah. So all this stuff, which now, now, the last three years, the other F1 drivers have started, started to, do. to do the same He yeah, did yeah. it years ago. Yeah, yeah. At the time, everybody's throwing them under the bus. There's got to be one that starts He's to very turn, right? smart. Yeah. Even I, I couldn't, I didn't envision that. I'm kind of, when he did this, I was barely into racing. I was like, why is he doing that? But I'm like, okay, interesting. Mm, let's see. And very, very switched on person. And, um, he he doesn't get, I don't think, the respect he, he deserves, really yeah. deserves. People in the industry know. They really know. But from the outside, they just see him as this guy who lives somewhere not in the UK and blah, blah, blah. He thinks he's this, thinks he's that. It's like, another the guy switched well, on. It speaks for switched itself, on, right? And he, the amount of pressure this person must have on his shoulders, um, you cannot imagine. So, yeah, a lot of respect for him. So what does the future hold for Jan now? So... Next year, back at top level racing, whether that be Hypercar, Olympia One, um, whether that be in the World Endurance Championship or Super GT in Japan or IMSA in America, that's where I want to be. Prototypes, cars with a lot of downforce. Um, so working with that, working on that, put a package together, maximize the opportunities that I've been graced with, really, because yeah. it's a blessing with having my... It's almost, I see it as a second chance, Yeah, really. The second bite of the cherry, which is you don't get to have often. You don't often. get the first one, let alone the second one. Exactly. <laughs> I'm very, very lucky and very blessed. So I'm working with the right people um, to make that happen. I'm also expanding in other areas as well that I'm interested in. Kind of emulating what these guys just said about Lewis, mm. like doing other things. I mean, I have interest, other interests in other categories. Um, Beatboxing? I never say never. Like I mean, I love the gym. Yeah. I well, I could really... tell. Ludo, shall I tell them how we met? What he was doing, flexing in the middle of the road. Yeah, uh, I changed my shirt, man. Yeah, I changed his shirt. I literally met him. He's topless. He's just sitting there doing some <laughs> magic mic stuff. And I was like, "What's going on here?" Look, but I get it. I get it. I'm into the gym every yeah. now and then. You got, you got to just flex, bro. Love it. Got, like, yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah. So that I'm interested in that, and this thing's that will align in the future. So for now, just planting seeds, not expecting anything immediate, but every day working on that, that is my um, target. The priority is racing, and then we can build on many things around that and with my image and other business activities as well. But fundamentally, the racing needs to be sorted, so that's mm. the priority. So Japan, where I was there recently, talking to teams, people's faces, you have to meet people. You have to be in their face. It's pointless sending yeah, emails, it's wherever. It's like if you don't, out of sight, out of mind, right? Exactly. Like, you know, that's really true. I've learned a lot over the last three years. There's more, uh, what's happened in the last, say, five years is more interesting than what's said in the movie yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah. So people have been asking me, when's GT2 coming out? And I'm like, bro, like, there's, I've got stuff, but I just need to win a championship, which I feel. It's coming. That is, that is that I'd feel satisfied winning, like one that's there. I'm not going to say where it is because I don't want to give energy out. It's, it's there. Mm. 
when that happens, then we'll talk. Then we see what happens. Yeah. But for now, like I need to focus on the on the racing and get that sorted. Then we can get on with do the things. Rest. Yes. Yeah. Then we can start our strip club and then... Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with with the women right? and the, yeah, involved. Yeah. And, <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I'm creating a new championship with, with right? ladies. And, See, I've already yeah. got it. You start we'll coming see. out with a helmet on. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. and that's your first thing. That first the visor flips off and you, then it comes off. You, you see, you need to see the what the in Japan, like in Europe, they, we don't have it anymore. But, uh, you know, they, they're the girls, group girls. Yeah. We call them race queens in Japan. Yeah. They don't have it in Europe for whatever reason now. Yeah. But in Japan, have these girls who are part of the team very pretty girls dress very nicely yeah, yeah. but they're part of the team and uh, we need to do something a championship that incorporates that yeah. worldwide maybe we That's need to do vision. a grid girl championship is a whole different thing <laughs> yeah. yeah interesting what advice would you have for young gamers out there I mean there's a lot of young gamers that look up to mm. you and stuff like even half of Dubai came here to say hello to you before the episode yeah, when they found I, out you were coming. I was saying the um, the industry is the most like lucrative. It's the most eyes on the industry that's ever been today. Tomorrow it'll be even bigger. It's so popular right now. So there's never been a better opportunity to get involved in gaming, esports, whether that be streaming, being a content creator, being involved in the actual game industry itself. You have so many opportunities to get involved now, but at the same time, there's so much competition. Mm. So you got to really know like what you want to do. Because you, I think, in anything, you got to hyper focus on one industry, one thing, and then once you start to get successful, then you can start to spread out a little bit. But you got to be really know what you want to do. Uh, you just go balls out. Yeah, yeah, really. Like the conversation needs to be had with. Now it's more accepted that parents can see there is something if your kid has got an audience of 50,000 people on his YouTube or Twitch account yeah. the guy knows how to and he probably knows how to monetize that as well so he can support himself mm. whereas 10 years ago that wasn't really the case like it's a why is he in his room he needs to but and that will develop even more in the next 10 years so again it's just hours it's hours and dedication and working on your craft, mm. finding your niche and working on it and carving out something for you. That's uh, like anything. But there's never been a better opportunity in, in no. gaming right now mm. than today. Yeah, streamers and, and gamers, it's insane the amount of this is the opportunities and stuff you get. people get. Yeah, yeah, it's but crazy. The, the sponsorship deals you can get, it's yeah. very, you know, very lucrative. Yeah, you get one sponsor, you're sorted You've got to love years. it as well. Yeah, I yeah. think, I maybe what I'm saying is not entirely um factual but it's my belief mm. like if you want to be involved in anything you you've got to love what you do because it shows if you're on camera to someone you don't love what you're doing it's just obvious yeah right? it's obvious people don't vibe with that that's confucius choose a job you love and you never work a day in your life choose the job yeah. you love and you, yeah that's the way forward mm -hmm. what advice would you have for parents who's talk kids to your are children them gamers you gotta talk to them no really you gotta sit them down and and it's not even gamers, it's life. Mm. I'm, I was very lucky that my dad spoke to me as a kid. I'm six, seven years old, and he's saying to me, my brother, my brother was four. I mean, you don't, you don't know what my dad's saying, yeah. but he's sat next to me like, well, what's he saying? Yeah. You do something in life which brings you purpose and that you're passionate about. And that's in the movie as well. That's seen at the dinner table. We had those conversations a lot through the years. So when I'm a kid, I'm an eight years old, I found cars, I'm watching motorsport on TV, and my dad's saying to me this, I don't have yet understand the concept of what a job is, but when I get to 10, 11, I start to understand, and I think, okay, that's what I want to do. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but that is what I want to do. I'm never going to let that dream go out. But if I didn't have that, of course, you can add even more structure. You know, now if, when I have children, God willing, you know, from an even younger age, I'd have the same conversation, but with layers. Yeah, I'd add even more layers to it from what I've experienced in the past. Okay, life, no one's going to give you anything in life. You are, what's the saying? Nobody's going to save you. If you're a man, or boy, nobody's coming to save you at yeah. all. You've got to fight, create your own, your own way. Um, that and don't worry and overthink too much because none of us are getting out of this life. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really. But you got to be. 
the conversation needs to be had at a younger age rather than getting to 15, 16 and years old And then trying to school. explain it to them when they've already had their, yeah. their ways of doing things. In the, well, yeah. it's like they get, people get to school and they're just about to go to university and still have no idea what they're going to do. Yeah. In school, it's not even emphasised until you get quite old. It's yeah. like, what it, do you want to do? It happens a lot. And especially, yeah, like, especially no, out here. You need here. to tell them young. Yeah. No, you need to prepare. Especially an Asia, Asian and Arab, they kind of engineer, doctor. Whatever, yeah. And there's so many people that study. They finish and they're like, oh, I don't even want to do this. Mm. And they've just wasted like, you know, how yeah. many years of their life studying for someone else. It's not even for themselves. Yeah. It's not something that they particularly want to do. Mm. Man, it's crazy. Is there anything that you feel like we missed out? Because I don't want you to be tired for your drive tomorrow as well. I think no, we've been going. Uh, I'm good, man. Almost um, two hours. Gym. Yeah. Self improvement. Right. Like I'm into that. Like it's something which I think is very important. Um, and that's kind of come off recently. So with Jim, I've always been kind of fit, mm. but really the Discipline. last three years, like I've taken it to a level where. It's part of my routine now. As mm. you said, you know, if you're dropping your kids off at school and you go to gym, for me it's the same. It's like I wake up, gym in the morning. Yeah. First thing in I the morning. I couldn't, all do you know, time. it's really weird. I just couldn't imagine a day without the gym. Mm. And it doesn't come from a, like, I used to be like a celebrity trainer. I used to be a very big personal trainer out here. I used to be 6% body fat all year round. I did the cover of Men's Health. And so that used to be my thing. So mm. I understand when other people are like, yeah, well, not everyone wants to go to gym every day. I'm not going because mm. I have to, you know, be this percent body fat or whatever. It's, I just can't imagine. Like days that I don't go to the gym, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of itchy. I'm just like, oh, I man, feel like that today. Yeah, today's been, weird, dude. It's it's the like I used to train twice a day, dude. <laughs> like at one point, sick. Yeah, it's part it's of weird. your mindset now, right? Yeah. Like if I go to the gym and if nothing else happens that day, you've achieved something. I'm, yeah, yeah, exactly. I've improved myself. Maybe zero point zero zero one percent. Yeah, it's like I've improved myself, and it's. I admire the discipline that goes, somebody who does that every day, this discipline, okay, I've, I've showed up, mm. showed up and improved myself. And I think that isn't spoken enough about, I don't think either as well, is the discipline is very mm. important. My dad was very against people to go into the army, but I kind of... No, no, I understand that as well, yeah, yeah. Admire that yeah, in the yeah. way it's structured. You need to be structured in a way. Of course, Especially if you're too as rigid. men and young boys, we need yeah, that stuff too. We really do. And you're saying that, funniest thing is like some of the best training sessions I've had were on days that I didn't really feel like going. Mm. And, you know, just back the pre-workout, get in the car. By the time I got there, the pre-workout kicks in. And yeah. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But some of the best training sessions has been like days where I'm like, I don't even know why I came. Mm. Like, I can't be asked to be here. And then you kind of do a couple of sets and you're just like, all right, I feel strong today. I don't know why. But mm. Like, do you know what I mean? Uh, there's, yeah, I, I mean, okay, I guess you're the same as well. But when there's something negative there yeah. and just you, you, for me, that's the best. Mm. If someone's saying something or they piss me off or they've not seen my logic yeah. for whatever reason, I'm there, I'm, I'm trained, I'm not thinking. And it's like, I'm, it's, that's the best it's the way it's not just mental release. it's scientific as well you re you literally physically release endorphins in your body endorphins yeah. are the happy chemical so like indirectly mm. it's good for you no matter how you want to look at it absolutely it doesn't make sense so uh, for me I, I never used to uh, when I used to see people before I'd be like why are you going to the gym every day I, and you're like are you shallow you're boring because yeah. you just go to the gym it's, it's different now yeah. I know yeah because I do it it's it, pe people people actually they they judge you by that the fitter you are like a lot of people said to me when i used to be dude i used to be like a giant erection dude i used to be just hard mm. with veins everywhere bro. people used to look at me and when they got to know me they were like you know for some reason i thought you were going to be such a dickhead when i first mm. met you. they were like i thought you were going to be so self-absorbed like really kind of like one of these gym guys that is so full of themselves and i was like why because <laughs> I got discipline because I'm on it. It's like the meme, like, you, like the, you assume the guy that is the biggest in there is the is the yeah. nastiest guy, yeah. but it's not. He's, he's always the, guy. exactly. Yeah. He's, he's the kindest guy who will help you out. So like, oh, I'll spot you, bro. And, yeah. and it's normally the guy that's maybe been there a week or so who's Dude, the one that's a bit of an Funny shit happened to me in the gym the other day. So this guy come in. He's a bit overweight. Um, He's wearing he's wearing a vest and he's holding his phone for I'd say ninety five percent of the workout he's like this on his phone, right, doing hardly anything, and then on his t shirt it says 
hardest worker in the room, <laughs> right? And I'm just sitting there going, in which room, bro? Because <laughs> it's not this room, bro. Like, I don't understand it. And like every single person I've seen with a t-shirt that says beast mode is not in beast mode. Mm. Like, do you know what beast mode is, bro? Like, what are you doing, bro? You can't be walking on a treadmill with a beast mode t-shirt yeah. on, bro. I don't understand it, bro. I just don't get it. That's like, do you know what it is? Those guys who come to play football in the park with a full kit and shin pads and stuff. Uh, full kit wanker. And like, yeah, they're like, they're ready to go. <laughs> yeah. They have the full kit, the brand new one with the premiership logos on the side and everything. Yeah. And they're so shit at football, but they have the whole thing where we're coming with no shoes on and that and twisting them up and all that stuff. It's like, it's like that in every industry. Dude. It is. Yeah. I was about to say, it's like that in like indoor go-karting when everybody just wears a white helmet. So it's what it is, what it is. And then there's a guy that has his own helmet yeah. that he's got painted, which fine but yeah. it's like you know that guy is just a bit he's a bit yeah he is dude do you know who else try hard when you see people who and i've seen this so many times dude people who go to the gym they have a duffel bag but they have their boxing gloves hanging on the outside <laughs> of their bag like to let people know i've been doing boxing like do you know what i mean it's like there is so much space in that bag. I can see it's a giant bag and it's squashed all on this side because there's so much space left. And you put your boxing gloves on the outside. So when girls look at you and think, oh, he's a boxer. I don't get you're this not mindset a boxer, because dude. it's we I see it of cars. Yeah. So when you have, I don't know, a, a BMW 520D mm. and it's a 520, it's a good car. But then it has an M. Oh, on the side yeah. of it, yeah, yeah. Or they have fake exhaust so it looks yeah. like an M5 but every every car guy knows that's not an yeah. M5 and that's not street pipe either yeah. Not like the, yeah but so like who are you trying to fool yeah. like the car guys know that it's not an M5 the normal people don't care because it's a 5 series yeah, yeah. So I don't get where your target market is like who are you trying to impress it's weird bro it's, it's, I'm it's trying weird. to think like why they're trying to impress their other this? dickhead group of friends who are all doing the same thing mm. they're, they're trying to impress the boxer and the beast mode yeah. guy and the guy the hardest worker in the room bro they're all, they're all a click on Facebook bro it's it's outrageous right it's it is outrageous it's weird it, it's just weird and it's like i don't get, now I, I understand that the target audience but it's like it must be such a just a circle jerk yeah, it was, yeah, yeah it is good good car it I mean, is. Good, it you is. box too yeah me too yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right and they have the cleanest the cleanest boxing gloves you've ever seen in your life <laughs> not one crease in this part of the fist at all dude. <laughs> you ever see someone's boxing gloves like who who's really a fighter mm. like you can't stand 10 feet next to him because they stink so much dude like, I you see. know they've been used, bro. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's the worst. Where, when are your plans to come back to Dubai? I feel soon I'll be back here. Because I like, been here a few times. We were here with the movie back in November. Yeah. I had a friend who was a stunt driver on the movie as well. He recently moved. Okay. So he's my reference as well. So he's, he's done the, the, the switch. He has a family and children and wife. And so I, he's loved, loves it here. The best other decision people you ever here. make, mate. I like the, It's closer the to culture. everywhere as well. Yeah. I mean, it's... Close to Japan, it's fine. It's still 10 hours. Yeah, but from how long is it from London? 13. There you go. you got three hours. I three, hours, three hours yeah, to watch Avatar, off. bro, on, on, so on the plane, bro. That's what it is. the rings. Yeah. So, so, yeah, but I agree. It's, it's you know, it's close to, um, it's like in the middle. Mm. But I do admire the, I mean, I guess why if most people move here, it, the respect that people have, like the, the culture. Safety, the the sa yeah. yeah, the safety, the, I mean, just the standard of living is higher. I, mean, I don't, don't want to really down on the West, but like the last few years, it's... it's Dude, the West is done. It's done. You know, when you... I... S say, you it, say, it, say it, say it. This is my well, TikTok clip. Same, say it, say it. We've lived in the same era um, yeah. for, a, for a long time and you and then you go away, you live in Japan for five years and you come back and you see what the difference everyone's, is. And it's, everyone's doing the same thing yeah, you left them doing, right? It's just kind of... Yeah. Uh, what's new here like it's... come back and you're like those are the same clothes i left five years ago i left you in those same clothes nothing's changed in your life huh that's how it is there uh, it's more as well the just ambition like i'm really i admire american people hmm. um and i'm spending more time here and more admire people the arabic mindset where anything's possible whereas i can only speak for the uk because that's hmm. where i'm from i don't know europe but in the UK, it feels it's you have to stay in your lane, and I don't like that. I don't like this term. Uh, don't get above your station. Yeah, yeah, it's like what? Who gets to demand? Yeah, yeah. Where, what, station where my is, station yeah. is. Yeah. Like who? So, when you move to another class, you know, crabs in the bucket. Yeah, it feels like that. I feel like I've been trying to elevate myself, trying to elevate my family name, and through the years, I still feel it now. There's 
people that try to pull you down because you weren't from, you're not from, you're not there. You shouldn't be, don't belong there. People yeah. that are there, they're like, why are you doing here? Yeah. I, I, it's a vibe, I feel it. Whereas you go to other countries and they're so, you can talk about what you've, I don't talk a lot about what I've achieved because I don't like mm. doing that. But when you go to America and you just say, yeah, I'm, I'm here doing some blah, 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 whatever. And they're, they're so mm. into it. I'm like, okay, LA is LA. But yeah. I, mean, I mean, New York, it's more real, but the vibe is good, good for you. Good yeah. on you. You're doing this, you're doing that cool that's your plan that's your dream that's fantastic this is my thing whereas here again same thing whereas in uk it's it feels like this smile is like, it's just jealousy bro it's just like, it's like, yeah. uh, deep resentment down, like, and yeah if i posted a picture i was at the um dubai mall um just before coming here in a meeting and at the fountains we had a yeah. food we were just having lunch a long lunch um meeting and uh, of course, it was getting dark, and the fountains going off the lights. Mm. And I took a video. If I don't know, if I post that video, there's going to be people from there. They will go. Oh, he's in Dubai. Yeah, yeah. What's this guy? Yeah, Who yeah, thinks yeah. he is? It's just like hate this him, is bro. what I'm just. This yeah. is what I'm doing. Yeah. It's not many. It's just pretty. This is cool. It's not. I'm not flexing. Not doing anything yeah, yeah. like that. I'm just doing it because it's a beautiful situation yeah, right yeah. now. But there were yeah. people that take it the wrong way. Uh, a way which I don't understand. I don't understand you it. Can't like, what, even come. worry about them or think about them. I don't. I don't. Like, yeah. I don't do much. Yeah, yeah. Much there. So I, I go off the energy I receive, but um, I'm aware of it. I'm aware that there's. I want to take myself away from that and be with people that are like good, cool. Let's do yeah, this. Yeah, let's I mean, collaborate. Do something. How can, we, wherever. how can we work together to do something else yes. and stuff like that? Yeah, uh, makes sense. Dude, it's been an absolute honor and a pleasure to have you here. It's been great um, to be here. I'm sure we'll do this again next time that you're here. Mm. Um, it was a pleasure to meet you and, and be in your acquaintances. Um, I don't feel like we've missed out anything, right? I, I mean, good, Ludo man. fell asleep twice, so I just want to make sure that <laughs> <laughs> we, he could drive home safely. He doesn't have my skills of falling asleep and waking up in the, in the right place. Um, dude, this is your house. Um, new studio will be ready by the time you come back. You're always welcome, and I'm sure we're going to stay in touch. Um Nine o'clock will be into the thing tomorrow. Just yeah. the car, the I've got to do at least a lap with you at one time. Maybe not this time, but next time. Uh, I need to I need to do a lap and uh I think I'm driving somebody it. else's car as well. Do you not bring my Ford Explorer, bro? Let's God, see what you can yeah. really do, bro. Car to car. <laughs> with a seven seat with two car seats in the back. Let's see what you can do, bro. No, but dude, my house is your house. Honestly, it's been an absolute pleasure um to have you here, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. And we'll and we'll get another one in, in what after GTA two comes out. Yeah, man. Let's yeah. do it. Yeah, let's do it, bro. Guys, I've been AJ, he's been Jan, boom.